Hello there! Welcome back to the Mavave vlog, your go-to channel for creating cool videos. And I'm still Daria, by the way. Have you already watched our cooking video? If you haven't, click here! Click here! In that video, I made my favorite dish, pad thai. Cooking vlogs are so yummy looking and they're easy to shoot in a regular kitchen. So whether you have your own cooking vlog or just one video with your signature dish, views are pretty much guaranteed. To be honest, I'm a huge fan of watching such videos on YouTube and Instagram. I watch tons of them for no particular reason, cause just it's food porn, right? In this video, I'm gonna show you in detail how we shot my cooking debut and what you need to do to create your own food vlog. Let's head to my kitchen! Let's start with the location. Our cooking pilot episode was shot in my apartment. That's my kitchen, my sweet kitchen. You might have seen it in our episode on transitions and splices. It's just perfect for a food vlog. If you watch cooking vlogs, you probably notice they are often shot in huge kitchens with fabulous lighting and a center island working surface. With this kind of setup, you always have plenty of space for cameras and lighting, if you need some, as well as the chance to frame the shots with your preferred size and background. Take a look at Gordon Ramsay's kitchen, for example. White furniture, natural lighting, you don't need a professional lighting setup. Even regular dumplings look gorgeous. This is Jamie Oliver's kitchen. Holy cow! It's so huge! Either the English chef is luckier than his American colleague, or that's not real Jamie's kitchen, but a studio. Oh, I'm so jealous, I wish I had this one. However, Jamie, like Gordon, has come to YouTube from TV. All cooking shows on TV are shot, who may have thought, not in real kitchens, but in big studios with a load of cameras and professional lighting. But this is a long way from most cooking vlogs. I'm so glad that my kitchen is so cute and full of light, and I even have a decent kitchen counter. The kitchen is combined with the living room, that's why we have so much space and light. We just opened the curtains and now we're shooting this video with natural light. As for a cooking pilot episode, we shot it late at night, so we needed to use some ceiling light. But still, we didn't need any professional lighting. The kitchen looks like it was created for cooking vlogs especially, but it wasn't. We used two. We used two cameras on tripods to shoot my cooking vlog. We also used the third one for backstages. The first camera was for me, as for the presenter. We set a medium-sized shot and central composition. Remember, your hands must be in the frame, so that everyone will see what you're doing. You might have seen something similar in other cooking videos. The second camera was mounted on the tripod and used for shooting close-ups of the work surface to make the process clearer and let the viewers get a closer look at the ingredients and the process of cooking itself. Look at the camera's position. It needs to be set above the work surface, not on the same level. We could limit ourselves to these two cameras, but it's always good to have the backstage, you know? That's why we shot this video on three cameras at the same time. But if you have no idea how to shoot videos like this, check out our tutorial on multicam montage. The link is in the description. But what if you have only one camera? Check out the life hack I took from the Ram Life channel. In this video, a camera with a wide angle lens is placed right on the work surface, which lets us take a closer look at both the ingredients and the presenter. By the way, sound is way more important than the picture in any vlog. As for cooking vlogs, a lavalier mic will work. Another easy option is the one-shot approach. Those cameramen who use this approach just shoot everything with one camera, from the presenter to the working surface, then the oven and back. In this case, there is no need to edit it for long hours and then synchronize it from multiple cameras. After you've chosen the style for your vlog, think about script and composition. Did you notice how we composed our video? It begins with short greetings from the presenter. Then right away I announce what I'm going to cook and show the results. Yeah, that's right, at the beginning. Then I show the ingredients, all the items I need for my dish in one frame. You may also note the quantity and approximate cooking time. Next thing is the actual cooking. Don't turn the video into a basic recipe video. That's a cooking vlog! While you're cutting up vegetables, tell your audience something about your dish or yourself. When everything's done, show the dish again. You don't have to eat what you've made for the camera, but there are some users who love watching that kind of content too. Food porn indeed. When the shooting is done, it's time for editing. Let's open up Mavave Video Editor Plus. Let's open up the full feature mode right away. 
to learn how to enhance videos like a pro. Drag all decent shots onto the timeline. Don't worry, we can cut unwanted sections out later. I'll give you a little life hack. If you put delicious looking shots of the results at the very beginning, it'll draw more attention to your video. And of course, I recommend you put a title with the dish name as the first shot. Click on Titles. I think titles like Clean Circle or Trendy Circle are perfect for this video. If you want to go bold and bright, there are titles like this too. We've got two ways to add titles in this case. First is to show all the ingredients you're going to use for cooking at the beginning. If you've already purchased the new Movavi effect sets, you probably know there are special titles for lists. Here we go! Beautiful! The second is to show the correct titles whenever a new ingredient appears in the video. Like this. You can choose whatever approach you want. Try to include all the important steps in creating the recipe in your video. But don't make it look like an hour-long tutorial. Remove all the unwanted segments and speed up long shots. Here we go! You can add some transitions between the different stages. I'm a fan of classic, so I'll take fade to black. Just look at how many wonderful transitions there are in the new sets. Plus, you can add some super cute stickers. There are some special ones for ingredients. So what do you guys think is the best part about this episode? On the one hand, it's just another new episode. And on the other hand, I made my dinner. Hope you appreciate my cooking skills. And I can't wait to see the links to your cooking videos right there in the comments below. By the way, guys, if you're interested, you can check out this video too. Subscribe to our channel if it meets your taste. And don't forget to give us your thumbs up if you like this video. Bye-bye, guys. See you soon.